tipping uh, that you have. Would you mind sharing with us today? And we're going to ask you, Pastor, uh, after you share, if you have a prayer for us this morning as we prepare for the word. But we're going to go ahead and uh, hear what you have coming up from 3E Ministries, uh, this wonderful equipping ministry. Hello, good morning. Thank you all. I'll take a quick minute to share what's what will be happening this Saturday um, at 615. I just want you to picture in your mind what difference it would make in your church for the women, for the men, for the men's ministries or your youth, personal ministries, and especially your new believers as you all are looking to do a harvest campaign, a reaping campaign. What difference would it make if you had deep engaging Bible studies that healed and transformed you and had you on fire, left your participants on fire to share with others where evangelism is happening spontaneously, you know? So I'm inviting you to an Emmaus experience, an Emmaus Bible experience, and it's happening this Saturday, 615 Eastern time. It will be a virtual event, and the cost of registration is your participation in the Bible study. So you participate, that's the cost. That's the cost of admission. And the goal of my doing this is, number one, that you all and those that may be around you that you know who may be feeling stagnant, that you all have an Emmaus experience that has you running to have such a thing done at your church. So register. Um, I sent the link to you all, and I think Shoni has it as well. It's 6.15 p.m. Saturday Eastern Time. And share the information with five, ten of your friends. Make sure you're there. Your churches are represented because you want to see, ah, is this something that we need? And is this something that we can do? So I look forward to um, seeing you all there this Saturday. And if you can't be there, if you register, you get the replay. Amen. Amen. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Pastor. Just a tremendous opportunity uh, to be equipped so that you can share the gospel with loved ones. You want to have that Emmaus experience. Uh, yeah. You want to be able to lead people as Christ did with the disciples on the road to Emmaus that they would be able to exclaim, uh, didn't our hearts burn within us as they opened the word of God uh, to us? And so go ahead, register, uh, Pastor Nashoni, if you can, at some point, uh, share that link uh, with us and uh, those of us uh, certainly who would want to be equipped uh, and be blessed by this opportunity. Go ahead and register and be a part of that equipping experience. Thank you, Pastor. Going to ask you if you're able to uh, have a prayer for us as we enter into this moment of the word uh, so we can prepare to hear what God has for us this morning. Certainly. Father in heaven, we Thank you, Lord, for leading us here. Our hearts, dear God, are yours, and they need touch. They need to be touched. They need to be healed. They need to be strengthened, dear God. We need your counsel. We need your instruction. We need your inspiration and motivation. Pray, dear Father, that you would lead God and direct accordingly, Lord. Please lead us in the way that we should go. And I pray, Father, that you would set us, prepare us for the day, for the challenges at hand. We ask, Lord, that you would lead us to drop the weight and baggage from what we've carried from the days before and let us have our mind fastened and charged upon you in the name of Jesus Lord we ask and pray amen amen thank you thank you thank you pastor thank you for praying uh, with us and for sharing with us this morning indeed uh, it's a new day and God has a new manner for us fresh manner for us this morning and uh, we are blessed, we are blessed family to have with us today, uh, Pastor Denry White. Uh, Pastor Denry White is with us today. He comes to us from uh, the Highland, seven, the great Highland Seventh-day Adventist Church in uh, Benton Harbor. Uh, we are grateful that he's here. He is a husband to Carla. He is a father to Nathaniel, uh, Daniel, and a father to his daughter, Isabel. Uh, he is a native of Jamaica, grew up in the great city of New York, but God has led him all over uh, to share this wonderful gospel of Jesus, my friend. It's good to see you. It's been a minute, uh, but we are grateful that you're here today. God bless you. We turn the time over to you uh, to share what God has laid upon your heart. We are ready to receive uh, the manna uh, for the morning. Welcome to the morning manna. Time is now yours. 
Good morning. Good morning, Pastor Samuel and, and all. Uh, thank you so much for the wonderful opportunity. Can you all hear me? Just want to make sure. All uh, right. Praise, praise the Lord. Thank you, Pastor Samuel. Thank you, Nishani, for the opportunity to come and serve, um, to get a morning uh, breakfast, a morning manner. Uh, thank you for the prayers and the support. Let's go ahead and jump into the word. I'm truly thankful for the uh, the Who community, community um, the Harvest community. Thank you for the work that you're doing down there in the South and well, your brother and sisters here in the North. While we freeze and try to thaw out, you all are doing warm, staying warm over there. We're a little jealous, but we'll go ahead and move on. Uh, Psalms 53, if you have your Bibles or your digital device or your memorial devices with you, Psalms 53. We want to uh, look at Psalms 53. Let me just put it to your note. Psalms 53 is a duplicate of Psalms 14 because David, when David is in distress, he repeats certain things. When he has a question, uh, he wants the acts of God. He uh, seems to like to repeat himself. But Psalms 53, I want to focus on it. It begins and simply says, the fool says in his heart, there is no God. They are corrupt doing abominably iniquity. There is none who does good. God looks down from heaven on the children of men to see if there is any who would understand, who seek after God. They have all fallen away. Together they have come okay. corrupt. And there is none who does good, not even one. Have mercy. Have those who work evil, no knowledge, who eat up my bread, my, eat up my people as they are eat bread, or do they call upon God? There they are in terror, great terror, for there is no terror, for God scatters the bones of him who encamps against you. You put them to shame, for God has rejected them. Oh, that salvation for Israel will come out of Zion, and God restores the, uh, the fortunes of his people. Let Jacob rejoice let Israel be glad. Father God, I thank you so much for this opportunity to speak to your people. Speak through me, forgive me of my sins, and lead me, Lord. Uh, lead us, uh, Lord, closer to you and help us to never, never be the ones to say there is no God. In Jesus' name we pray, amen and amen. I want to share a brief story with you. When I was about 10, 11 years old, I had learned how to uh, swim. Now, a lot of people uh, superimpose that islanders know how to swim, that because we all are surrounded by water, that we are just born in the water and we know how to swim. But I did not this one, not this particular islander. And I was in Harlem, New York, and just learned how to swim. And uh, we went to a Sabbath school picnic at that time, my church, New Hope Seventh Adventist Church in Harlem. And we went to, a couple of friends and I went over to the pool and they had a diving board there. And I saw everybody jumping in, uh, older and younger. And I saw even this little kid jump in and dive in. And I said, well, I, I know how to swim. I, I can do a few strokes. And so I went on the diving board and I began to panic. You got to understand that I was just learning how to swim. I didn't have never even been on the diving board before. But I figured since the little kid could do it, I could do it also. And anyway, make a long story short, I'm standing on the diving board and I begin to panic and I decide that it's time for me to turn around. I'm not going to do this. Uh, they can call me chicken or whatever, but I'm not going to do this. And as I began to turn around, there was this uh, young lady at that time who I was fond of at a attraction for that she went to my church. And I saw her swimming nearby so uh, so she can get a closer view. And, you know, my male ego kicked in and and I figured, well, hey, you know, it's time for me to impress her. Let her know that, hey, you know, I can swim just like the others. And so I jumped into the water and I began to drown. I began to drown. The word of God said the fool says in his heart that there is no God. Now, this context is not uh, an idiot or, or stupid, someone who is uh, uh, not have common sense, but rather in this context, a fool in this context is someone who plans 
without inquiring of God. The context says that this, this is a fool that plans without inquiring God. So David starts off the passage. He says, the fool says in his heart that there is no God. And then he goes into now, which is the meat or the culture of the passage, that God is always looking. God is always searching. And God looks through, looks down from heaven unto the human, and he seeks to see if there is any righteous. Is there anyone holy? Is anyone godly? And with, with a disappointment in David's tone, as you read it, he keeps says, he said it three times, no, not one. There is no one good, no one that is faithful, no one that is righteous. David says this and, uh, and, and that God is searching and no one is found righteous. Now, friends and brothers and sisters, I want you to know this is not the first time. This is a, a reoccurring event of God that God is always searching. You remember the story of Adam and Eve right after Adam and Eve um, sin. Um, the Bible says that God came, the Spirit of God came. Then when Cain was, was tempted to sin, God came. Noah, at the time of Noah, when all were sinning, God came and he was looking and he was looking amongst the humans to see if there was any righteous. Um, then the time of Abraham, God was looking again. Even Hagar, even Hagar, uh, Abraham's uh, second wife, or his, I uh, wouldn't say mistress because he did marry her. Uh, even Agar, God came looking after her. Isaac, Jacob. The story goes on that this is a repetitive thing of God. He's constantly looking. God is constantly looking. God reminds me of my mother when I was in high school. Now, when I was in high school, I was not the same Denry as you see right now. Uh, trying to be a man of God, trying to do right, trying to be faithful. Uh, when I was in high school, I was a, a knucklehead. I was rebellious. I was trying to do my own thing. I was into the party life, and and I would at times skip school. I would cut school and go hang out with my friends. But it seems that my mom was like God. She was always looking. I remember many times when my mom and I were just talking about this in Jamaica last week where we went down to a funeral there how I would cut school. And for some reason, I don't know, maybe God was just playing tricks on me. Um, wherever I would plan to go, somehow my mom would appear. Somehow my mom would get off the bus. Somehow my mom would come out of a taxi. And I don't know how is it that my mom knew where I was basically most of the time. And But God, it was more than my mom because my mom only knew some of the things I was doing. But God knew everything. God was always looking. God was always searching. God was always showing that he's ever present. I thank God today that friends, my, my friends, uh, that we can say that our God is ever present. That's why David says, the fool says in his heart that there's no God. How can you say that when the evidence of him is constantly amongst us? The war that's going on now in Israel, this was prophesied. This was in scripture, told us that there'll be wars and rumors of wars and told us that these things shall occur. The war that is still going on in Ukraine, Jesus said it will go on. The political unrest, God said that these things will occur. The, the nations cannot get together. We are at the, 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 the toenails of, of, of Daniel chapter 2. We are told that these things will happen. God is constantly showing us that he is ever present. So I thank God that he is always present. But the scripture says in this one that God is looking for the righteous. And in disappointment, David's tone is, no one is found. No one is found. And so David ends it in verse six. Look at verse six. David ends it and he says, oh, that the salvation for Israel will come out of Zion. When God restores the, the fortunes of his people, let Jacob rejoice. Let Israel be glad. David did not see at his time of living, at his time, he did not see the outcome of this want, he did, the desire that David, he did not see it, but he, he desired it. He wanted it to happen, but it did not happen. He says, oh, that the salvation of Israel will come out of Zion. This is an incomplete thought. 
an incomplete statement, just like the story I started off telling you that it's incomplete. David says, God can find not one. And David is frustrated and he says, oh, that salvation will come out of Zion. That there is one that he will find one. He will find one that is righteous. But the scripture keeps telling us none is righteous. None is righteous. None is righteous. An incomplete thought. David is searching. And the thought is incomplete. There's other incomplete thoughts. I'm sure that you're familiar with some of these uh, stories that you have read and always wonder what 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 what, hap what happened? Uh, you know what what occur, occur? I I hate watching a when I sit down with my family and we have a a movie night in the house and we watch a movie. I hate endings where you 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 wonder like okay what what happened? What 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 happened? Did they did the two characters get married? Uh, did they ever find the children? What what happened? Jeremiah in, in his exile, the last few chapters of, of Jeremiah, the book of Jeremiah, we know Jeremiah is a weeping prophet. One of the reasons he never got to get married. He never had children. He was, his mission was one of those missions that pastors hate. He's preaching and nobody's listening. And then the, the Bible, the, the Jeremiah, book of Jeremiah ends that he is sent an exile to Egypt. And we have no records of what happened to Jeremiah. We don't know. It's incomplete. Another one is Ezekiel's temple. The Bible talks about four temples or four sanctuaries. And, and it's uh, one of Moses, the, 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 excuse me, uh, the one of Solomon. And then Ezekiel has a dream, a dream of a temple, but it's never completed. It's never built. Herod builds a temple, but that's not the one. Ezekiel's temple is never built. Whatever happened to that? That is so incomplete. How is that just this random dream or vision that Ezekiel has is never complete? Another one is Jonah's range. The last chapter of Jonah, chapter four, where we see Jonah has preached to Nineveh, even though he reluctantly didn't want want. He's prejudiced. Uh, some say he's racist. He did not want to talk to these people. He says a few words. I wish sometimes I could just say a few words and the whole nation is converted Whereas Noah preached for 120 years, Jonah comes in the room and just says a few words and the whole nation is converted, but Jonah is mad. He's mad at God. And the chapter ends that Jonah is in rage. Incomplete statements. And just like that, Psalms 53 is incomplete where David is saying, oh, I wish, I long for the salvation of Israel to come out of Zion. He 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 is he is he is he's just focusing. And here's here's a beautiful thing. David is longing for a kingdom, and remember that David himself is a king. He has a kingdom, Israel, but he realized that this kingdom is not the kingdom. He has a kingdom. He's a king, and he realized that this is not the kingdom. He sees. The, the, the faults of man and even his own fault in 51, Psalms 51. He himself realized, I'm not worthy. I'm not even righteous and I'm the king. And so David has this longing, this longing. My friends, you're probably wondering, like, is this story ever going to complete? Is the pastor going to stop saying that this is incomplete? Is there a connection to this? Turn with me, my brothers and sisters. Psalms, excuse me, Romans chapter three, Romans chapter three. Once again, I told you that this is a repetitive theme that the, that God is searching and finds no one. Romans chapter three, beginning at verse 10, tells us that none is righteous. This is, is uh, Paul here is, is quoting from David himself, and he repeats what David says. None is righteous. No, not one. No one understands. No one seeks for God. All have turned aside. To together they have become worthless. None has do done good. Not even one. 
And David, uh, uh, Paul adds a little bit from, from Proverbs. He says, their throat is open grave. Their tongue is deceived. They're, they're venomous, like a li their lips are venomous. Their mouth is full of curses and bitterness. Their feet are, shift, are swift to shed blood. They run for misery. The peace of them, no fear of God is in their eyes. So Paul picks up David's mantra here. He picks up from David, he picks up David's theme and that all of us are, 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 are sinful. None of us is righteous. All have come short. All have come short. None of us is righteous. Verse 22, the righteousness of God through faith in Jesus Christ, because what all have sinned and all have come short of the glory. I like to check myself down then and God, excuse me, checks me even more. Now and then I look at myself in the mirror. I check out and I check my clothes because I always want to make sure that I, I look presentable the best I can. But God goes deeper than a surface look at the outside. God checks our inside. God checks what's really going on between us. We can come to church on Sabbath and, and we can go to our places of work and school and we smell good, we look good, we, we, we look handsome, we look beautiful, our hair is well done. And people think that we got it going on, but God knows the deep inside DNA of us. He knows down to the, to the, the micro cells of us, our inner thoughts. And all of us, Paul says and David says, are filthy. All have sinned and come short. And like David, Paul is saying, is there any hope? Is there any hope? Is there a completion to this? And my brothers and sisters, I thank you for the 66, thank God for the 66 books of the Bible, because the Bible constantly reminds us that is the story is not incomplete. The story is completed. And one person has completed that story because in the same says 23 says, for all have sinned and fallen short of glory of God. Here is the answer to David's question. Is there any salvation? 24 says, and the and are justified by his grace as a gift through the redemption that is in Christ Jesus. Oh, my brothers and sisters. Oh, the solution, the answer to David's problem, the completion of David's thought was not in any other person besides Jesus. It wasn't in Solomon. It wasn't in Hezekiah. It wasn't in Jeremiah, Daniel, anyone else, Esther. It was in Jesus himself. Jesus Christ came and he was sinless. He paid the price for our sins. He, verse 25 says, from whom forward the repetition of our, 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 by his blood, he has received by, by faith. Jesus had covered our sin and made a forbearance, a covering of our sins. So even though we all have come short by what, by the life of Jesus Christ and the death of Jesus Christ, we can be righteous with God. We can be one with God. We can be beautiful with God. So my story continued as I bring this to a close. My story continues. As I mentioned, I was drowning. But as you look at the screen and you see me standing for uh, talking to you right now, you're not talking to a ghost. It's not a ghost that's talking to you or a zombie. We don't believe that even though it's October and a lot of people in this country walk around and act like they are and stuff and believe that stuff. But we don't believe that. At least I don't think we do. And so you're not talking to a ghost. You're talking to a living, breathing human being. And so I did not drown on that day. Why? Because the lifeguard jumped in and saved me from my foolishness. Oh, my brothers and sisters, the lifeguard saved me. 
for my foolishness. I thought I was the man. I was trying to impress a young lady. I was trying to impress my friends. I took a few classes and I thought I was the man and the life God had to save me from my foolishness. Even though the fool says in his heart, there is no God, God saved him from his foolishness that now the fool can become wise. The hopeless can have hope. The, 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 the backslider could come back to him. The prostitute could become the woman's ministry leader. The, the drug addict could become the health and temperance leader. The pimp could become now the pastor. Because of Jesus Christ, whatever we were, when we were drowning in our sins, we are now a new creature, a new creation. We are the, the former is no more connected to us. We are now with the newness of Jesus Christ. So I don't care what you're struggling with, what you're going through. We all are sinners. All are sinners. The homosexual, the adulterer, the thief, we all are sinners. We all are in need of a washing. We all are in need of saving. And there is only one. And David says, oh, that the salvation will come from out of Zion. David knew what he was talking about, even though he didn't see it in his time. He knew that the Messiah will come from Zion, and it was not a regular person. It was Jesus Christ himself. And so my brothers and sisters, let me leave this with you. God is going, Jesus says, I go to prepare a place for you, and I'm building a new kingdom for you, a new city and my favorite, favorite passage of the scripture, Revelation 21, 1 to 3, says God will be with his people forever. He will be in their presence. He will be their God. They will be his people. They will see him. We will be able to smell God's breath. That's how close God will be with us. He will walk amongst us, talk with us. We could touch him. We could behold him. Do you realize, Do you let me put this to you. Do you realize the most sinful, well, the only planet that has sinned and let God down will now become the capital, the city of the whole entire creation? Oh, if that's not a redemption story, think about it. The, the only earth, the only planet that has fallen, according to Revelation 21, when the new Jerusalem comes down, after Jesus comes again, makes everything new, the new Jerusalem comes down, the capital of not only the universe, but all of creation will be this earth. Well, not this bad old sinful earth, but the new earth. We are the chosen. We are the place that God will make his home and we will be able to smell his breath. Amen, 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 amen. So we will be able to smell his breath. So the only question is, Luke 18, 8 says, when Jesus comes, Luke 18, 8, will he find faith on earth. I told you, my brothers and sisters, God is searching. Second Peter 3, 9, 12, Peter says it, listen, just because he's delaying does not mean he's not coming because God is searching. He says, all the, he's searching that all will come to repentance. He's searching for holiness. He's searching for people that looks just like his son. Not like me. Not like your pastor. I love your pastor. Not like not like us regular humans. People that look like his son have the character of his son. That's who he's looking for. So I thank God for Jesus Christ. I thank God for Jesus Christ. Because when God is searching and he sees no righteous, no one righteous, when Jesus stands in front of us, he sees his son and Jesus says, these are mine. And God is saying, because you are mine, they are mine also. So 
Harvest Church, I thank you for this opportunity. Let us go on today knowing that God is constantly searching, but he's not scrutinizing. He's not searching to try to find out our faults and our sin. He's searching to see if there's someone who will come to repentance. Someone who will come to Jesus today. Someone who will give their life. I challenge you to tell somebody today that God is not searching you to scrutinize you, to try to find your faults, but he's searching to see if you're willing to have faith in his son, Jesus Christ, that you're willing to give your life to Jesus Christ. Can I pray with you before we dismiss today? Father God, I thank you for this opportunity to share with your people. The story is completed. Just like you saved me, you send a lifeguard to save me out of uh, the pool that of, of my pride. You've saved us, Lord, out of the ocean of sin. You've rescued us with your son, Jesus Christ, the eternal life, God, who dived in head first, snatched us out, suffered the loss for us. But I thank God he didn't stay in the grave. He came out to show that he had power over sin. We thank you for your love. We thank you for your mercy. Search our hearts, Lord, and find your son. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. Thank you, Pastor Samuel. Thank you, Nishani. Thank you, everyone, for the opportunity. Amen. amen. Praise God. Praise the Lord. What a word. Amen. Amen. Praise amen. The Lord. Amen. The Lord. amen. 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 Oh, praise, 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 praises be to God. What a God we serve. What a God we serve. He is indeed uh, the divine life God. He came into the pool of sin to save us. And how grateful we are for that reminder this morning that our God is faithful and in his faithfulness, he's searching. And I like, Pastor, you mentioned that uh, he's not looking for our faults. Uh, he is looking beyond our faults because he can see our needs. How grateful we are uh, for that reminder. If the uh, Son of God searches our heart today, uh, will he find faith? Will he find faith? Uh, let us continue to be faithful today. Let us continue to trust in the grace of God. Again, it's our prayer and fasting at noon. We will uh, hang out at the well for a conversation again uh, for a few moments and uh, we'll close the day together. Uh, but in the meantime, let's go and share this wonderful news, this wonderful message uh, for God who searches. Uh, he searches in love. And he is ever close. Let us pray together. Thank you again, Pastor Denry, for sharing with us today and for being with us today. Loving Father, what a wonderful way to begin the day. Uh, to know, God, that this is really a new beginning. Even as we confess our faults, our sins before you today, God, you're faithful. Uh, you're willing to forgive us and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Uh, we can start afresh today, Father, because we have a God who is indeed uh, a searching God. Uh, he is constantly looking for us, God. Wherever sin abounds, grace much more abound. And so we are grateful, Lord, that you are that kind of a God, that we can never go so far away from you, God, that you would not come after us. And so today, God, we are opening up our hearts, Father, that you will be indeed our King, uh, you will be our Lord and certainly our Savior. Father, we thank you for your servant who came by to uh, just bless us with that word today, Father, to remind us of the love of Jesus. And so, Father, we pray that you'll bless him, bless the, his family, bless his ministry, Father. Continue, Lord, to lead and guide. May you continue, Lord, to use him to motivate, inspire, encourage men and women uh, to follow the Savior. Father, have your own way with us today. Someone is not feeling well today. God, be their healer. Someone may be a little bit discouraged, may be facing some challenges today. Father, may you give them the guidance, oh God, that they need. And whatever you do today, we would give you praise and glory. We thank you, Lord, for the morning manner. We thank you for being today with us. Be with us throughout the rest of the day, we pray. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. God bless you. Again, family, join us at the well. Uh, certainly, uh, we share the link with you uh, for the um, 4E ministry. I uh, hope that you will avail yourself to that wonderful equipping opportunity. Uh, blessings to you. Have a wonderful day. Uh, we are grateful that he looks beyond our faults and he sees our need. have a, needs. Have a wonderful day, uh, family. God bless. Be safe and be well.
Ja, 